Welcome to State of the Arts. I'm your host, Jason Hedden. We're coming to you from the campus of Gulf Coast State College in Panama City, Florida. And in this series, we like to talk to some local movers and shakers in the art scene. And my guest today is Heather Parker. She okay. is the uh, creative force and boss lady over at mm. Floriopolis, local professional artist and wears many hats in the community. Thanks mm -hmm. for being here. Hi, thank you. Yeah, sure. So, all right, let's start. In case anyone hasn't heard, what is a Floriopolis? And what's, what's going over the, on over there in uh, historic St. Andrews? Floriopolis is an arts and culture metropolis, and we dug that name out of old newspapers, the Panama City Pilot, before St. Andrews even had a name. Floriopolis was a name being tossed around, so we needed an arts and culture center in Floriopolis, or in St. Andrews, as historic St. Andrews was taking shape and blossoming into its full potential, we needed to get an arts center on the ground floor, right there, front and center, so that it was part of development. So we opened an arts and culture metropolis. Awesome. And we're what, just just over a year, a year and a half? Um, yeah, coming out on the end of um, a year and a half, yeah. Okay. So what, what are the what are the typical things that we might we might see there? We have the work of over a hundred and twenty local artists. Okay, Lo mm -hmm. all local. All local. Okay. Most are Bay County, and then we have a few spatterings of Walton County, Gulf County, Gadsden County, and Calhoun County. So we have a couple of those, and then majority Bay County. They are the people that you're sitting in traffic with, you're okay. standing in the line at the grocery store, you're waiting in the drive through at the bank, and one of those bank tellers is an artist that has work in Floriopolis. The oh. crazy guy who lives down the street and he's always in his <laughs> workshop, his stuff is at Floriopolis. Right. Mm -hmm. That's an old family friend of mine, Dennis Land. Cunningham I ran into yes. the other day who just came to art late in his life. Mm -hmm. um, I was pleasantly surprised to see some of his work in there mm -hmm. last time I was in. Yeah, and he actually paints down the street oh, cool. at another St. Andrew's business and then shows his work down at Floriopolis. Well, there's always something exciting happening. I know um, mm -hmm. you've got the great courtyard out there. My son and I like to come and play chess right. on the, on the, on the uh, pavement there, which, yes. is, which is pretty cool. I know you host music events and We'll get this in again at the end, but tell us where's the best place to go to find the current events at Floriopolis. Our Facebook page. Okay. Uh, Facebook has a way that if you're a restaurant, you can mm -hmm. put your menu online. So we fashioned our schedule to look like a menu, and it says Floriopolis menu. So even if you don't have a Facebook account, you can Google Floriopolis menu, and our complete schedule of events will pop up. Perfect. Yeah, very it's, smart. It, it's very good, actually. <laughs> we had to push it through a couple times to get it to pass muster. But Like, yeah, we're yeah. a restaurant. Right. It's our menu of activities. So like Art it. on the Spot is all the time. Anybody who walks in, our challenge to our volunteers is to get whoever walks in that door to sit down and take a spontaneous 10-minute art break. Awesome. And so we always have a free project out to get you to just sit down and know you didn't intend to paint today or you didn't intend to assemble something or sculpt something, but we're going to try to get you to do it. Ten minute therapy and then no regrets. Yeah. No one has ever said, gosh, I wish I didn't sit at this table and make this thing. Or we have a bubble wall. So when you come in the door, we ask you if you want to draw on our wall. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people say, hmm, that's a good idea. But if you stay a while, we'll convince you that it, it's gone past idea. Right. It's real, and right there. Yeah. You can, do, you can actually peer, do it. Is there a peer pressure involved? Uh, Are people more likely when they see that so many other people have written you know, on the wall? You know, if we could stage people to be in there doing <laughs> the stuff all the time, right. it's difficult, more mm. difficult than we thought to get a grown-up to sit at an empty table and, and pick up a colored pencil. Yeah. But if we have a few grown-ups already sitting there, they'll do it. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, tell me, let's go back a little bit. Give me some of your your background. I know you've been a professional artist for a long time. You've been mm -hmm. in the community for a while. Did you grow up in an artistic household? Were you, have you always been mm -hmm. an artist? Did you always know you, did you have creative I, I outlets knew. as a kid? I knew I would be a teacher and an artist. Okay. Uh, so creative household, I mean, my dad was a captain in the Air Force and my mom was a stay-at-home mom. So. But I know for every project I did for school, whether mm -hmm. even if it was a science or a math project, I used art to get there. Okay. So I have those memories of always having the art supplies around. Um, and then in high school, I, I didn't really like academics very much. So I graduated. You didn't like I didn't. Okay. I graduated by the skin of my teeth. Mm -hmm. um, and I only, by my senior year, I only went to art class. And mm -hmm. I was living um, in an apartment at the time, mm -hmm. and I paid my rent by clearing out my art portfolio and panhandling on, on my way home. 
So wow. I used to joke that I sold more as a senior in high school <laughs> right. than I do now because now I volunteer all over the place and right. my selling of art takes a back seat to the community things I want to do. So yeah, right. art has always been the thing. Is it, do you find that, I, you mentioned being a teacher, I, I know for myself, I had people growing up, they're like, well, do you want to be an actor or do you want to be a teacher? And I'm like, well, why can't I be both? Right. You know, one feeds the other. Yeah. I think I'm a better actor because I'm a teacher and I'm a better teacher because I'm an actor. Agreed, you absolutely. Know, in, in, in academia, you know, one of my fears is to be that, that teacher who used to be an actor. Right. You know, and I think it's important to stay fresh with projects and, mm -hmm. and things like that. Do you find that... Um, balance to be a struggle oh, yeah. running a venue and still doing your own work absolutely but it's so important right. um, I will uh, I'll get stressed and not know why and then someone has to remind me have you painted did you sit down and draw anything right. and without that balance then yeah it is a struggle so you do have to remember that that's your passion right. and that's the creative outlet and you have to have that to be the full person that you can be right mm -hmm. put make sure you're putting something in the tank Right. And not always just output. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. So, who are some of your uh, influences or your sort of inspirations, either in the art world or not? You know, are there musicians? Are you, who, who, who do you artistically uh, r resonate with, or hmm. who are you drawn to? Well, as far as um, famous artists, Gustav Klimt is mm -hmm. one of the personalities that I admire and the art and the time that he lived and the struggles that were happening in the world while he was making his art so I probably that's probably the first and foremost one mm -hmm. and then I haven't been refueling my tank lately right. so if I look for inspirations I, I kind of empty right now right uh, yeah I don't I don't have a whole lot uh, Floriopolis has been the focus and mm -hmm. everything has been pouring into that and trying to inspire other people's creativity. Mm -hmm. And then I can sit back and watch. So customers, visitors, uh, people who take the time to post on our Facebook page and say that the time they spent at Floriopolis was the best part of their vacation. Wow. Those are the little instant gratifications mm -hmm. that I'm getting right now. And, and they're important and so much more meaningful to the person who sent them. You know, I, right. I hope I'm appreciating them enough. Yeah. So how long have you been in Bay County? We moved here in 2000. 2000, so okay. All right. I'm not a local yet. I don't um, know how long it takes. I have a long time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so in, in 15 years, how have you seen the local art scene change or, or grow? I think we're more unified than when I got here. Mm -hmm. um, Zan and I started um, City Arts Cooperative in 2004, and so 10 year anniversary. Zan Asha? Uh, Zan Miller. Zan Miller, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, no, Zan Asha is our replacement Zan. Right, I right. know. Well, I because never knew I another know. Zan. And <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. I mean, she does a little, Zan Asha does a little bit of everything. I thought, yes. oh, is it possible she was here and then No, left? no, but they're, they're like the reincarnation of each okay. other. Zan okay. Miller moved um, uh, to north of Tallahassee. And, um, and then shortly after that, Zan Asha came okay. in and, and I was like, yeah, a replacement Zan. How cool is that? Cool. But, and they're okay. very, they have to meet each other because they're so very similar. Yeah. Um, but so we started the co-op. And right. then right after that, I became president of the Panama City Artists Association. So we kind of grew that, grew the co-op mm -hmm. at the same time. And um, I wouldn't have been able to even start Floriopolis if I didn't have the, the co-op experience to lead me to the next step. Right. And um, Beach Art Group has now started. Right. And we have the plein air painters get together mm -hmm. weekly. You know, so artists seeing each other and socializing mm -hmm. with each other and being inspired by each other in the same place, that's how you grow it. So right. all these groups are very, very good. Well, it's, it's exciting for me. I, when I think of you, I think of art first, of course, but then I also think of community. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you're really great at sort of organizing these events that bring the community together, and art just happens to be one of the things that's, that's part of it. Right. Um, I think of some of the camaraderie that you and some of your uh, colleagues and, and uh, fellow uh, business owners have there in St. Andrews, and it seems to be a nice, tight-knit yeah, community. I'm, think, I'm thinking of Brad down yeah, the street. Yeah, it's, it's you guys have some good. fun sort of rivalry mm -hmm. sometimes in terms, of, in terms of marketing and promotions mm -hmm. and things. Um, well, we're building on keep St. Andrews salty. Right. Now, so, where did, where did so we've that got to keep from? it lively. We've got to, okay. We have to keep it on the edge of salty. Okay. And then okay, that, okay. that can go so many different ways. So right. it's really fun. Did, you, did somebody just, is that yours or did y'all dig that up out of an old paper? Too? No, I'm giving that one to Brad. Okay. Keep St. Andrews salty. Keep St. Andrews salty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Brad, we're talking about Brad with uh, Sun with Jammers. With Sun Jammers, yeah. 
And the old, is the old Rexel drugs? Yes, that still has the sign, so. But it's cool, mm -hmm. like, from an art point of view, I appreciate that he kept the sign. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and not, didn't replace it with something, so it's cool. Um, bum, bum, bum. You mentioned a little bit about growing up, but um, did you have formal art training? Uh, yourself, or were you sort of self-taught? Yep. Did you do Stopped classes and things like that yep. outside of high school? Um, been to a few workshops here and there, but I, I stopped in high, stopped my education at high school mm -hmm. um, and went to work. And yeah. I always chose fields that were creative um, mm -hmm. and had a lean for teaching. So I right. worked f in the education department of the Children's Museum of Virginia. Oh, so yeah. What I, city is that? That's in Portsmouth. In Portsmouth, yep. okay, yeah. And I, that was my absolute favorite job until my next job right. where I got to be the assistant curator for the Suffolk Museum of Art and then awesome. that was my favorite job. And then we decided to homeschool and mm -hmm. um, it was hard finding a job that gave me the flexibility that I wanted yeah. so I decided I would be self-employed and contract myself out to do all the things that I now knew how to do Right. and never went back to working for somebody else. Well, what, you've had a unique path, what, you know, sort of cliched question, but what advice would you give to the young artists, those seniors in high school who are trying to think, is this something I can, do I want to make a life out of this? Do, should I go to, should I go to art school? Should I take classes on the side? Should I just, you know, well, I, put up a at sign this and point, start selling my stuff? You, you know? should put up a sign and start selling your stuff. At this point, I long to go back to school. Right. So I would say if you well, have you the know, opportunity um, in front of you. We have some classes <laughs> here at Gulf Coast State College how open to that? anyone. How we are but that? a stone's throw away right? from. I have taught for the Encore program, right, right. but I have, wasn't able to attend. And mm -hmm. I would look at that roster and say, oh, I want to do all those classes. Uh, so. I would say don't put yourself in my position. If you have the opportunity mm -hmm. to go to school, go, do it now, because it's gonna be harder to make it happen later. Right. So go, go to art school, go to business school, go learn all the things you wanna learn, because then all your options are open. Right. And the hardest part about being a self-employed artist is remembering that the business part of it is as important as the art part of right. it. And even through running Floriopolis and having a market where we only accept art in the market that is presented as product. It's there, mm. made by the artist, for the customer to buy it. And that's a whole different ballgame right. than making art for the sake of making art. Yeah. Now we have the exhibit area at Floriopolis, and that is art for the sake of art. We don't want a price tag on it. We don't want to attach a monetary value to it. It's strictly created by the person for someone else to be moved by it, to be inspired or to ask questions. So we have those two different zones that the separation of those is very important to me so that we've got the creation space and the product space. Right. And as an artist, I think you have to decide how much you want to put into each of those. Mm. I don't ever think of the art that I make as a product. And mm. I, I find it hard to part with it, actually. I've, yeah, I've heard so, you say that yeah. before. So it's, uh, it's not created for anyone to buy it. Right. And those are, those are different things. And as an artist, you've got to figure out where, where do you want to go? Do you want to make product? Mm. All right, there's one track you need to follow. Or do you want to make art for the sake of creating and sharing? Then mm -hmm. you, you follow a different path. Right. Or fi yeah, finding the balance. Right, or put those. the two together, yeah. Yeah, we, I think college programs are guilty frequently of not teaching the business side of things very right. well. You mm -hmm. know, we talk about it in, 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 uh, in theater and film, you know, it's show business, right. you know what I mean? And, and a lot of us get out into the world and know very little about the business side of things. Right. I think we should almost require, you know, at least marketing and basic business classes as part of mm -hmm. fine arts degrees. I think sometimes or people get them in hire. graduate school. Um, you know, because I, I think that people can excel at some things and you're just naturally made to excel at those things and right. when you find them then you have balance and it's I think punishment to force yourself to excel at other things mm -hmm. and that your passion is going to suffer so right. if you are not the person to handle your own books don't force it right. work yourself out set up a plan so that you can hire somebody to do those things for you right. not every artist should market themselves um, even at the co-op, we would have the problem of requiring everyone to do a shift. There are some personalities that should never work a customer service <laughs> right. shift, never. Yeah. And so they Johnny need needs to, to be hiding in the back. <laughs> right. Yeah. Let him do the things that he is good at, it's and let's put people. the people on the floor that yeah. need to be on the floor. And uh, even early on, doing festivals, I couldn't work my own sales booth. 
But I could work yours. And I'd sell the crap out of your stuff. Right, right. But don't make me sell my own. <laughs> now, I've, I've grown past that. You know, now I can do it. But don't, don't force yourself to do the business parts or the marketing parts or the public appearances things right. if that's not your thing. Set yourself up so you can pay somebody to do that. And you'll both benefit from it. Right. That's so. great advice. Yeah. Well, I could talk to you all afternoon, but unfortunately, we got to keep the segment a little okay. shorter here. Um, but one more time, if I want to know about the events at Floriopolis, what's the best way to find it? Floriopolis Facebook page. All right. Floriopolis on Facebook. Uh, thank you, Heather, so much. All right. Thanks. Uh, this is Jason for State of the Arts. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll see you next time.